Shamai, welcome. Um, I haven't made a tutorial for a while because I've been working on some pretty big projects, which hopefully I'll be able to release tutorials around at some point. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to try and just like get something out there. So I just made this very simple uh, little uh, uh, price checker and um, it also displays quotes from Hal Finney. Um, it uses hardware which we've already used before, the SP32. And then we just added this little extra module here, which is a, a, an, an LED matrix. Um, so it's a fun little project, and uh, the whole thing costs like under ten dollars or something. Um, so, so yeah, so we're going to look at making that, um, and that's going to be that's going to be today's project. Quickly looking through eBay, you can see that you can buy these uh, LED modules pretty cheap. There's one there for like five pounds. Here's another one for like four pounds. They may take a while to get to you because they're, they're from being ordered from China, but um, yeah, they're pretty cheap. You can actually buy the individual modules and kind of click them yourself together. But I recommend for this project, if you want to keep it simple, just buy one of these uh, one of these ones here. It's made up of four of those uh, square modules, and they're eight by eight LED modules. Um, and then, of course, we're using the wonderful, beautiful uh, ESP32, um, which uh, there we are. There's one there for four quid. So look at that. We get it for how much is that then? So that's goodness me is eight pounds eight pounds for this project so that is ten dollars on the head um so yeah fantastic fantastic little project um as always the the code and uh is and there'll be some uh, instructions uh, on the github here um so we're just going to go in um and uh i'm assuming that you've you know bought this uh uh your, you've got your esp32 and you've got your um led module here um so then it's a, a case of just going in and then copying all the code from the there you go it's from the github and then um one here. paste it in there uh into a new um, project in um arduino um and then here's the um LED display, so if I unplug it all, take it all apart, we can put it back together again, can't we? Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, on the actual um, module itself, um, you can see it's made up on the back here of four separate um, LED square modules. Um, it's crazy what you can get just for four quid, it's brilliant. Okay, so uh, we've got a bunch of pins here, we've got a clock, we've got the chip select, we've got data in, ground and VC which is the the live wire so um, on our ESP32 now I'm not using so usually in the other project tutorials I've used this uh, this is the dev kit one ESP32 um, but I ordered a bunch of um, uh, this is another ESP32 which looks practically identical but the the, the wiring is slightly different in some some cases um, but I ordered them because they're, they're a little bit smaller so you can yeah it's quite useful um, for some applications uh, but the one difference is that on this ESP32, the um, uh, three fault and ground are here, so you can plug, plug components directly into there. Whereas on this ESP32, um, the, the three fault is um, where's the ground? The ground's up there, yeah, and the three faults here. So if you get an ESP32 and you're not sure, if you just Google like. The name of your sp32 and then gpio in, in google images you you should get um the information you need um right so data in on this sp32 and this sp32 data in is 23 and 23 is at the top here um all right so and then what's the next one the next one is chip select now chip select is five just as it is on this one so where are you five? I know you're on this side somewhere. There you are. And um, what's next? The clock. That is 18, which is next to five, I think. So that should totally work. Have I got that the right around? Yeah, I've got that the right around. Um, so now that's all plugged in. So this is, this is a really simple tutorial. Um, Order a bunch of these, I mean it comes with some of these jumper wires, but if you go on like eBay, you can order a big box of them and they're female to male, male to male, female to female. Um, and they're just so useful. 
Uh, I keep running out. I keep meaning to order more. Um, so now you can you can uh, well we don't up to the light probe battery bit yet are we? Um, so we plug them into the computer. There we are. And now pretend it's not already loaded up on there the software. Um, we'll go back to Arduino here. Um, so this is the uh, the code which I copied into the the project. Now. Um, it is using uh, three libraries which you'll need to download. Um, so uh, so MD uh, underscore Parola there. So if you go to tools, sorry not tools, uh, sketch, include library, manage libraries. Um, and if you type in uh, MD underscore Parola. There we are. Um, you'll need to install this, okay? Um, and you'll also need to install MD underscore max seven. Where is he? So here we go. Um, in fact, if you type in, you could just type in MD underscore max seven, and then you want to install all three of these uh, libraries, okay? Um, uh, they're specifically for, for running this this project. Um, they're pretty cool when you install those libraries. If you go up here and you go to um, examples, um, it'll install a whole bunch of examples which you can use. Here we go. And there's some pretty cool ones. There's like, uh, let's have a look. We've got like uh, Pac-Man and um, yeah, we've got some pretty robot eyes and some sort of animated things which are pretty fun. Uh, but they're a bit complicated to kind of to work with, so we're, we're, we're going to try and keep it simple. Um, in fact, I find it's quite a complicated library, just the way things are laid out. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're just copying and pasting my code, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're using this MD Parola part of these three libraries. And uh, we're basically kind of using, using a modded version of this, this scrolling program here. Okay. Um, the first thing you need to do... Uh, um, would be to put in your your Wi-Fi credentials because um, it's going to go to open node and it's going to go get the price um, and then display it on your LED matrix here okay um, so we've got a couple of libraries we call it at the top here we call uh, the libraries to connect it to the LED the to connect the LED matrix to the ESP32 um, and then we're calling we've used these libraries in quite a few projects now Arduino JSON um, and uh, Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi client secure so this is to connect to your Wi-Fi. This is to connect to the Open Node API. This is to kind of pass through the, the JSON uh, data which gets sent back by Open Node. So you put in your Wi-Fi credentials. Um, we've got a couple of variables here. So we've got um, BTC GBP. That's the, the price which will be fetched back from uh, Open Node. If, you, if you're USD, you can just change that to USD or EU, EUR if you're um, uh, EU GBP um, uh, and that yeah so that yeah uh, what, what happens here now uh, wait time uh, thousand milliseconds not sure what that does does something um, okay all oh, right yeah this is this is quite an important point in fact hmm in the code here I'll put uh, a little comment um, uh, if uh, this hardware doesn't work try these so there's like four um uh different kind of like implementations of these these off-the-shelf led matrixes which you can buy my one is ic station hw but one is called parola the other one's called like fix 16 or something um and then there's another one like a generic one uh, so I'll, I'll put those there and then if this if when you run the code if it kind of looks a bit squiffy on your LED matrix you can just like replace where it says IC station HW you could just like copy it you know the other um, uh, hardware type and then paste that in there so that'll be there when uh, when you when you go and nick the code off the github um, so we've got four devices uh, so you could change that if you had one with with more devices if you had like eight devices but if, if you just buying the same module I've got then it's four four LED matrixes stuck together um, we've got the the, the clock pin uh, which is 18 
um, we've got the data pin um, which is the, the DIN pin and that's 23 and then we've got chip select there sometimes that's called save select on some modules but no, the same thing that's that's um, pin 5 so that's correct um, and it will be for you as well if you're using that sort of standard ESP32 uh, dev kit thing um, we don't need that so I'm going to delete that in fact I'll go through and I'll, I'll clear up clean up a bunch of these comments and this code because it's a bit, it's a bit messy um, uh, we've got some scrolling parameters here which just say uh, oh, we don't need that there did we get rid of that um, we've got some uh, perimeters here which uh, just tell it how fast to go so if you wanted to slow it down or speed it up you could do that there um, and then at the end of each sort of scroll of text there's a slight pause um, uh, which I did get rid of but actually it's kind of disorientating if it doesn't pause a little bit um, then we we start running our code. So this is our setup here. Um, so in our setup, uh, you can see how busy I am having a hard time to just go in and clean this stuff up. In our setup here, we do the usual thing. We, we you know, um, make a serial connection. Um, so we could do, we could do debugging if we wanted to. Uh, we connect to our local Wi-Fi um, using the credentials we put in at the top, uh, and then uh, we begin our LED module. Uh, we set, I've set the intensity to zero, um, so that's like the dimmest it can be. You can actually set up up to 15. Um, should I turn it all the way up to 15 and see what happens? <laughs> um, and then this is kind of our scrolling perimeter thing using our variables from our scroll thing up here. Then we go into our loop. Now each one of these, so it just kind of like picks these at random uh, uh, and then displays them. It's not in any sort of order. Um, but in our loop here, it just it just kind of like picks one of these and then displays it. Obviously, um, in this uh, uh, um, uh, scrolling bit of text is the, the the Bitcoin price. You have to go and fetch the Bitcoin price. So we've got another uh, function down here called on rates, and this is this the same function which we've used in a whole bunch of times. Um, and this just connects the OpenNode API uh, using the secure port, so HTTPS. And then it fetches the uh, Bitcoin price, passes through the data, and then it uses you know your B, your um, GBP or uh, USD or EU whatever uh, to get the right currency for you. And then it puts um, well there are printouts of the serial thing, but it it puts uh, where are we? Here we go. So it puts the um, the the price which it fetches back for your currency it puts in this this variable called conversion which i think we declared we must have declared up here somewhere where well, we declared him here we are we've declared him here okay so he's a shah um <laughs> and uh yeah we, we could put 20 characters in there so it, you know it was, hopefully hopefully that'll be filled up one day um so so yeah so that's it it's, it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward um uh So I've just got to put in my um, my Wi-Fi credentials. Right, so I've put my Wi-Fi credentials in, and now it's just a case of uploading it. I have to press the little button on the SP32 to tell it to go to upload. Um, Right, I'll switch to that so okay so hopefully this will turn on in a second it's resetting Whee! oh that's bright look at that the computer can be used as a tool to liberate and protect people rather than to control them yeah sweet it's pretty strange that bitcoins bitcoins will be worth a dollar in the relatively near future. Is it gonna go fetch the price? It's pretty strange, I was just repeating on that one. Um, so it's kind of, because it's, it's random uh, which one it picks, um, uh, we'll have to kind of wait and see if it just uh, does the price one for us. Easy come, easy go. It's one of my favorite quotes of his actually, it's after the 
second crash, I think. Aha, I think it's fetching the price. There we go. Oh my goodness, we've had a bit of a dump. That sucks. <laughs> easy come, easy go. Well, there we are. Thank you, Hal. <laughs> it's like he's in the room. Bitcoin seems to be a very promising idea. That's true. Thank you very much for watching. We've got our uh, little uh, Hal Finney quote machine stroke price display thing for under $10. Order it. Um, you know, you don't have to be running any sort of lightning node or anything. You're just using the open node uh, service to go and fetch a price. Um, uh, you could like sort of stick that DSP32 to the back um, and then, or maybe, I don't know, embed it in uh, a unit in your living room or whatever, um, your, in your like TV unit or something. Um, there's loads of things you could do with it. It's a great little project. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, keep building, keep hacking and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.